Literally 8% of my subscribers have come from my most viewed video, the one on vinyl record cleaning. So when Vivor sent me an invitation to use their ultrasonic 6L vinyl record cleaner, I jumped at the offer, hoping that somehow magic could strike twice because after hundreds of other poorly produced and engineered videos, it hasn't happened again yet. What makes the Vivor Ultrasonic Vinyl Record Cleaner a record cleaner as opposed to just an ultrasonic cleaner? This motorized spindle, which you could probably make yourself out of a knitting needle, sands the motor. Otherwise, it's just an ultrasonic cleaner. But it does come with this cool motorized spindle, so we're going to test it out. Now, be very careful. Never, ever add more than one record at a time. Even though the Vivor's marketing pictures show the spindle can hold six records at a time. For those of you who aren't scientists like me, you need to know that ultrasonic cleaners like this one, the term ultrasonic is another way of saying it uses sound waves to blast a solution in a tank. Now this isn't an issue if you put, say, four diamond rings into the tank at the same time. But for vinyl, yes, for vinyl, you cannot put more than one album in at a time. Let me explain this for the naive viewers out there who probably stopped paying attention in science class during middle school. Ultrasonic cleaners use the sound waves that are well above 20,000, well above what you and I can hear. And when a liquid solution is hit with these sound waves, it creates cavitation a phenomenon that occurs when a liquid static pressure is lower than the vapor pressure of the gas dissolved in it, causing small cavities in the form, in the liquid to form, of the cleaning solution. The collapse of these bubbles, which are created, releases a powerful jet of pressure, which are great at cleaning all types of items, and it is great for getting into hard-to-reach areas, like the grooves of a vinyl record. But what non-audio scientists don't know is these ultrasonic sound waves can smear sound from one vinyl record to the other. Non-audiophiles can't hear the smearing, but audiophiles can. I discovered this after using the Vivor with multiple records the first time I used it because four records at the same time were being cleaned. And to be exact, when I was playing back these vinyl records, I could hear parts of the music I hadn't realized was there before. It must have come from the other albums. Not to toot my own horn, but I appear to be the first person to discover this issue, and it's why you're lucky to have clicked on this video where an actual audiophile scientist is doing the review and not some hack. The giant advantage of the pool and the bucket method these types of cleaners use is that you can actually see the residue that is left behind after cleaning. In my first vinyl cleaning video, it would have been very, very dirty old vinyl record to actually show dust or dirt that's on a clean white rag. But are these ultrasonic cleaners better than the manual vinyl cleaning solution I myself proposed and recommended almost two years ago? We're going to find out. We're going to clean 20 records using my standard method. The cleaning solution sprayed onto the vinyl record, then wiped clean using a lint-free microfiber cloth. Now these aren't going to be Bish records because they are the cleanest records available. Fun fact, did you know not a single song from Diane Bish has ever been labeled as having vulgar content by the RIAA? It's true. So I went out and found 20 albums at a local record shop. And let's get to work. Okay, now we're going to clean those 20 records again in the ultrasonic cleaner. Let's first though, unbox, unpack, and set this thing up. 
There's a lot to unpack with the Vivor. Instructions are non-existent. Even assembly instructions are almost meaningless. What are these plastic things? Because my IQ is close to 400, I was smart enough to ask my mom to assemble the Vivor for me because I didn't know what I was doing. But even my mom got it wrong, thinking I only should clean one record at a time. This thing needs almost all the acrylic cylinders added to allow the screw to apply pressure so the spindle doesn't just spin all by itself. What temperature should you set this thing to? Not just for vinyl records, but for cleaning anything. Sadly, there's not even a chart in the box to show you how to clean anything, anything at all. Why not at least put a sticky note in saying, Google is your friend? So I set it for 40 degrees Celsius. How long should you set the time? Who knows? I felt five minutes is long enough. So after cleaning 20 records that I'd already cleaned using my tried and true method, what do we have at the bottom of the pool in the tank of, of solution? How much additional dirt and grime did this remove? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Let's jump back into the pros and cons and then we'll get back to the rating and the conclusion. The pros are, it does work. Sure, nothing was achieved by cleaning vinyl records that were already cleaned. But you could see the cavitation process at work. You could feel, you couldn't, I could, the water being warmed. This channel isn't about cleaning your old jewelry or your old tools. I'm not going to drop a dirty old hammer in the tank and tell you how clean the hammer got. But like all ultrasonic cleaners, this works. For how long? That's another question. I felt the plug on the back felt a little weak and the overall design was pretty flimsy, but for about $139, you really can't complain. Let's look at the cons. It's loud. It takes a lot of time to set up. You might even need your mother to help you. It takes up space. You're going to have to find a place to store it. And do you really want this next to your hi-fi equipment? It doesn't really go with a high-end equipment. It doesn't look high-end. You also end up using a ton of cleaning fluid. This is the 6L, 6 liters that is, and 6 liters is more than one gallon. I know a lot of you watching think you've got the rating for the Vivor 6L figured out, but believe me, you do not. You see, it doesn't make music. It cleans music. So we're not going to go with wine, our drink of choice. Instead, we're going to go with polyethylene glycol, but not just any polyethylene glycol. We're talking good sense with a 4.8 at a five star rating from almost 4,000 Amazon reviewers. So it's top notch. And to help the cleansing process, we're going to have a hot bowl of steel cut oatmeal from Birch and Meadow. This combination of drink and high fiber food will clean you out as well as the Vivor cleans your records and other items. The fact is you use a hell of a lot of solution, but it's no better than the manual method I spoke about two years ago. Also, the manual method is so much faster, especially if you have less than 20 records to clean. If you just want to listen to one album, I could use one-tenth of one ounce of cleaning solution using the manual method, listen to one side of the album before I could even set this thing up and get it running. And even if you have hundreds of records to clean, how often do you need to change the solution when it starts getting dirty? The instructions are non-existent, not just for cleaning vinyl, but for cleaning virtually anything. 
for the singular purpose of cleaning vinyl records, I don't see the appeal of an ultrasonic cleaner. And I'm not just talking about the Vivor 6L, but any ultrasonic cleaner. If you have jewelry to clean, anything else that can withstand being submerged in water, I say get one, but do not buy one for cleaning your vinyl records. The manual cleaning method is faster, just as good, and uses significantly less cleaning fluid. Before we get to the bonus content of this video, I want you to remember for more low quality content like this, remember to subscribe. And if you want to get dedicated monthly videos and badges and some videos earlier than the general public, think about becoming a member for $1.99. I want to talk to you today because our great nation is in a time of peril it hasn't seen since the British burned Washington in 1812. I'm talking to you today because you need to know that only one of the five presidential candidates has the right proposals to keep our constitutional rights protected, our taxes low, and has a rational plan for educating our children. And because 99% of my subscribers are male, I'm probably not talking about the candidate you currently plan to cast a ballot for on Tuesday. I know the golden rule. Do not get involved in politics. That's not what your channel's about. But the 2024 race is simply too important for the future of this country for me not to get involved. So please bear with me especially when you consider the consequences of this election, starting with our Constitution, the First Amendment specifically, your right to free speech. Did you know that Mark Salisbury of Tallahassee, Tennessee, spent three days in jail for exercising his First Amendment rights? No, this did not happen 100 years ago. It happened this year in 2024. Yet only one of the candidates for office wants to protect his and your First Amendment rights. Did you also know that 84%, I'm not making that up, 84% of high school graduates, graduates, didn't get all the answers right to a simple five question multiple choice test? Once again, only one candidate is demanding this basic information be taught to our children. And did you also know that only one candidate has a truly concrete plan to lower your taxes, not just for you, but for every single American, including the poorest Americans? All the other candidates are simply playing one group off another. That's not inclusiveness. That's divisiveness. It's not what America is about. For those of you who aren't familiar with our First Amendment rights being under attack, not just from Mark Salisbury in Tallahassee, Tennessee, but all Americans, how will this one and only candidate protect you? Simple. By banning, using federal law, the draconian local and state laws that trample your First Amendment rights with a federal law that allows free speech not just everywhere, but all the time. Mark Salisbury went to jail, not for what he was trying to convey, but when he was trying to convey it. Yes, it's a sad fact that you can't say what you want when you want. Mark spent three days in jail because for six consecutive days, he had the audacity to use his First Amendment right to convey a message of love and compassion. That's right, a message of love and compassion at 2 a.m. by sending the music of his favorite musician throughout his neighborhood for all to hear at 220 decibels. His First Amendment rights were trampled by local noise ordinance laws, which, because he's a great patriot, he refused to obey. And taxes will be lowered by passing the common sense, not a hobby law that will eliminate sales tax on all audio products by declaring them a necessity, just like food. And those high schoolers I mentioned before, it was a simple five question multiple choice option test to select the gender identity of amplifiers, preamplifiers, DACs, speakers, and turntables. 
there simply isn't a requirement to teach audio equipment gender identity in our schools, but there needs to be. And if all of the above isn't enough to convince you this one candidate is the only one that deserves your vote, a commitment to, cl to declare National Record Day a national federal holiday. This November, cast your vote for me, the scientific audiophile, by writing in my name on your ballot, the only candidate that is right on all the issues that matter. I am Chris, the scientific audiophile, and I approve this message.